The space shuttle is down, but not down where they wanted it. Weather prevented a landing in Florida, and so instead it landed in California. And since the change was on short notice, there were not many people there to greet the five astronauts after their highly successful flight. But here's ABC's Ken Kashiwahara at Edwards Air Force Base. Challenger turning final now. Perfect was a word NASA used a lot today. Perfect landing weather at Edwards Air Force Base and a near perfect landing to end a near perfect mission. But because the shuttle was supposed to land in Florida, shuttle control had some good news and some bad news for the astronauts. The good news is the uh, beer is very, very cold this morning. The bad news is it's 3,000 miles away. And 3,000 miles away was the reason for NASA's change of landing plans, thick clouds over Cape Canaveral. NASA wanted to land Challenger near its launch site to cut down the turnaround time between missions. Now the next mission may be delayed for more than a week. But for America's first woman astronaut in space, the California landing was a homecoming of sorts. Sally Ride grew up in Los Angeles, about 100 miles from here. After a brief medical checkup, the astronauts took a congratulatory phone call from President Reagan, who couldn't pass up mentioning the change in landing sites. You know, I was going to meet you in Florida, but then you decided to land in California. Again, you didn't stop and pick me up off the South Lawn like I asked you to. I'm guilty, sir. Because of the unscheduled landing, only a small crowd of Air Force personnel and their families were on hand to greet the astronauts. The loudest applause went to Sally Ride, who was praised for her professional performance in space, but who said it wasn't all work. The thing that I'll remember most about that flight is that uh, it was fun, and in fact, I'm sure it's the most fun I'll ever have in my life. But while it may have been fun in space, ground technicians discovered a problem with the shuttle's brakes. They found broken metal parts in the brake system when they removed one of the wheels. NASA won't say the problem occurred on landing, but the landing rollout was longer than usual, and the shuttle was stalled on the lake bed for more than five hours before the ground crew could tow it. But that didn't stop the astronauts. They took off for Houston for another homecoming and more accolades. Ken Kashwahara, ABC News, Edwards Air Force Base, California. This is Lynn Schur. Eight, seven, six. The men traveling with her were named Crippen, Halk, Fabian, and Thaggard. But from the beginning, this was Sally's ride. Liftoff of STS-7 and America's first woman astronaut. This sure is fun. She even made the work look like fun, joining mission specialist John Fabian in the textbook deployment of two communication satellites for the governments of Canada and Indonesia. Beautiful. The flawless launches, spun up and out, on target, on time, earned NASA some $20 million, a technological and commercial success. Crippen the veteran was their commander, but the four rookies stole the TV shows, sending down music they'd taken into orbit and earning the title the happiest crew on record. And then the pictorial highlight of this mission, launch and retrieval of the West German cargo carrying a TV camera, the first such use of the Canadian-built remote arm. It was no accident they left the mechanical limb flexed in the shape of a seven as this seventh shuttle mission circled the globe. And while the weather here in Florida cast the only gloom on this entire flight, what a way to drive. At least a few spectators waiting at the Cape found something to rejoice over as they watched the landing on television. Sally Ride's parents. <laughs> Despite its accomplishments, by not landing here today, Challenger has delayed by a week its next trip off this launch pad, scheduled now for the end of August. And because of flight requirements, NASA won't get another chance until the 11th mission, early next year, to make the round trip from this location it so desperately needs. Lynn Scher, ABC News at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida.